Oh, our fan mail's here. Awesome, I love my fan mail. Gosh, there's so much fan mail. Man, this is great, what's... Yes, yes, the golf decoder's here. I got the decoder, yes. Yes, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, let's see what the message is. Okay, set it to B4. Okay, here we go. T. I. My gosh, it's time to, time to, time to start the show. A crummy message from Max Q. Jeez, that was a disappointing decoder ring. Golly, I guess they're telling me it's time to start the show. And it's the Golf Kingdom. And as usual, we've got a great show for you. Let's bring in our blueprint right here. We did decoder ring, so we're gonna decode three things to help your game in the build it segment. After that, we're gonna go pop culture with come on Eileen. If you lean in your swing, I'm gonna help you with that. Then we're gonna go on the course and help you with a tricky shot that you maybe face. And we're gonna talk nerdy. Yeah, I got some nerdy little sign stuff to help you with your game. And a visit to the Golf Kingdom kitchen where I'm gonna help your putting in the kitchen. And as always, we're gonna close with a time to rise. Are you ready? Cause it's time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world, the Golf Kingdom. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Okay, let's kick off the show. We just had our awesome decoder ring that we used. So the build it segment, we're gonna keep decoding and I'm gonna give you a couple things that you need to decode to understand how to do some things right in your game. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the decoder ring and we're gonna talk right away about grip, is how do you decode if you've got your grip correct? Now, I've got a great little trick that you've got to do, and you're going to need a little piece of tape to do it. But if you do this, you'll make sure that your grip is perfect every time you swing. So let's come to the wide view here. I'm going to grab one of our Callaway 7 irons. I'm going to explain something. So when I see a player set up to the ball after fixing their grip, so they'll get a, a weak grip where the hands turn this way, maybe the thumb's at 12 o'clock on the grip. They'll, I'll fix their grip and get them into a neutral grip where the, the thumb's over here at like 130, but then they'll put the club down and it'll look like that because they put their hand back on top twisted this way. Here's where this little tape trick comes in to help you get it right. So I've got a little piece of tape here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the tape on the club first. So I wanna put it on at about 130. So there's 12, there's 130. I'm gonna put the tape on right there at about 130 on the grip. So what's gonna happen is that tape is the marker for my left thumb if I'm a right-handed player, for my top hand. So when I grip the club, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that piece of tape right on top, right there, it's on top. Now I'm gonna not even look at the club face. I'm gonna put my hand on there, I'm gonna bring my hand in here, and then I'm gonna turn the face square. So when I do that, put my hands down, that grip is normal. It is in a neutral to strong position. If you're a slicer out there, I want you to check this. If your thumb is at 12 right there and not on that piece of tape, chances are the club face is moving around too much, it's too weak, and you're hitting the weak shots to the right. We want a strong lead hand. We don't want a weak one. We don't want anything weak in life. We definitely don't want a weak lead hand in golf. So put the tape on there, 130. So three o'clock would be right at the side, 12 o'clock would be right on top, right in between. Tape on top, hand on, grip it like normal, then fix the face, and when you put it down, make sure it's straight, and all of a sudden, you'll have the grip you're looking for. Now, let's talk about the second thing to decode is this foot, your lead foot. What's your lead foot doing when you swing? If you're over the top and hitting slices, or you finish in a different position with this left foot, you've gotta keep in mind, it's telling you something. So if I set up with my lead foot kinda of straight right here, and then I swing, and as I come down, this heel moves away from the target. Chances are I am now coming over the top and cutting across it. The second thing that'll happen is if I swing down and my foot straight and I swing down and I turn it to a different spot coming through, it's telling me that this is in a wrong spot for my flexibility level. If you're really flexible, you can stand with fairly straight feet to hit a golf ball. If you're not flexible, you gotta get them out, you gotta duck foot them, you gotta Charlie Chaplin it a little bit. But this foot right here, if it's moving around and dancing around, we don't want it dancing around. Remember, this is the build it segment. 
We want to build a strong grip. We want to build a strong lead side in golf. We don't want this hopping around on us and twisting because it'll be over the top and it will also lead to inconsistent impact. So keep in mind, if you're finishing your swing and your foot changed positions, you could come back and check it by coming back to your setup and going, whoops, it didn't start there. It obviously moved. The easy remedy is turn it out a little bit. It'll feel weird, but turn it out and that should be stable and in place and help you come through and stick to finish and hit better shots. So build it. We decoded a couple great things to help your game. Okay, it's time for pop culture. One of the most fun things we do because we use movie lines, catchphrases, lyrics from songs, all kinds of fun stuff to help your game. And we're singing today. It's come on, Eileen. We're going to talk about if you lean incorrectly in your swing, how do we fix it? And I kind of got my shirt untucked here. I'm kind of sloppy. And if you're sloppy with your shirt, you might be sloppy with your finish. And I got a great drill involving your shirt to help you get rid of the wrong lean. So what do I mean by wrong lean? You know, we get the come on, I lean. Well, we don't want to be leaning backwards when we hit a golf shot. Leaning backwards is A, hard on your back. So if you have a sore back, maybe when you watch your video on your phone, you'll see you're leaning back through impact. Usually if I have a player who's leaning back, they're trying to help the ball in the air and they're hitting it weak into the right. Now, that's something we don't want to do in golf. We don't want to hit these weak right shots. We don't want to lean back and hurt our back. When we swing, we want to be moving forward onto our front leg and finishing over here on our front side, not leaning back. So the question is, how do you fix it? And what's an easy way to fix it? Here's what we're going to do. So I've got my shirt untucked. So if you play with your shirt untucked, you got to tuck it in. So I'm going to tuck my shirt in. I'm going to go back to looking like a professional here. So I'm going to tuck it in. I'm going to tuck it in really, really tight. So if I get it tucked in really, really tight here, I'm going to stretch it as much as I can, is this is the, the tucked in shirt drill. So I got it tucked in tight. If I lean back, I can feel my shirt pulling and untucking. Your goal here is to not untuck your shirt. So tuck it in tight and swing and don't untuck your shirt. See, if I have that feeling of this not pulling and, and untucking as I lean back, it makes me go over here. So it gives me feedback. It's something that you have on, I think most of the time when you play golf is you have a shirt. So I'm tucking it in tight and I'm trying to not come down and lean back so I can feel the shirt untucking right over here. It's going to come loose on me. So when I stand here, see how it's all saggy now? It's kind of sloppy look. So the, the pop culture drill, the come on Eileen. We don't want to lean back. We want to get going forward. So tuck your shirt in tight and swing and don't untuck it. And you'll find you'll get over there and you'll stop that lean back and stop that hurting your back stuff. Okay, here we go. Mwah. It's our keep it simple Strano kiss segment. I got something simple to help your game. It's a fast segment, so get your paying attention, eyes on, get focused, because this is gonna be simple and fast to help your game. And we're gonna talk about the finish of your swing. The question is, when you finish, do your arms and body blend? Are they together, or is one in one spot and one in another spot, and they don't go together? Keep it simple, something easy to understand. So if I'm gonna hit a ball at you guys, if I'm gonna hit a ball at the camera, and I swing through and my body stops here. See, my belt buckle's pointed over there, but you know you wanna make a big finish, so you wrap your arms around your body like this and you bend your elbows a lot, and maybe you smack yourself in the back of the head or the shoulder with the club and you're finished like this. That hurts to stand like that, number one. But what it does is it doesn't blend. My arms have gone forever and my body has stopped. So what you wanna understand is, if all you can do, maybe all you can do coming through is get to right here. Maybe you're a little stiff, a little tight. You, you know, you don't have the strength in the lead leg to hold you without recruiting the right side or the trail side. And you can get to here. Well, if you're here to get your arms to match, they have to finish here. They can't finish like the PGA Tour logo or, or a Rory McIlroy. We're finished way over there. They have to blend with the body. So you'll have a nice little short finish. I call it kind of a jab finish, not a roundhouse, just a little jab finish. So it's, we're gonna be short with our body rotation and short with our arm swing. So we're gonna be somewhere here with our finish where our hands may finish out here in front of our face and not over behind our head and the club behind our head. So you have to understand this simple thing, this kiss, mwah, simple thing to be in the right spot with the finish. Now, stay tuned. We got more great things coming up here in the Golf Kingdom faster than one swing 
and one putt. Do you struggle with your hands being too active when you putt? Well, Fusion Dynaline Training Aid is what you need to putt better. It clamps on your putter, you drop your alignment stick in the training aid, you put the training trident on the top of it, and then it touches your body and locks your stroke in place. It's impossible to wiggle your hands. Get Fusion Dynaline to control your stroke. Visit FusionPutting.com, place your order, and get free shipping today. Well, we're all here on the course, and we've got a dilemma that happens, unfortunately, some of the times in golf, because Golf's just not fair. That's why it's a four letter word. I've got a ball that stopped right on the edge of the bunker here. So it could have rolled over there anywhere, could have rolled up by the flag, but no, it stopped right there. I can't stand and hit the shot. I've got to get down in the bunker to hit it. And, and as you can see, I'm that deep in the bunker. I'm above my knees on this lie. And you know, it's a close shot. So it says a close shot. I want to hit a wedge. So I'm gonna hit a wedge. The problem is when I sit with the club like this to hit the wedge at this high off the ground, the club is not sold. It's not touching there, it's touching like that. So when I hit the ground, I'm gonna hit the heel first and see how the club face rolls over. The shot you'll hit will look like this. So I'm gonna get in there, choke down, and I'm gonna go ahead and chip it over there and, uh-oh, I just chipped it down in the bunker. That's because the club hit the ground and did that. I need a club that won't hit the ground and do that. So what can I do? And I've done this for hours before. I've practiced this shot going, what club can I hit here to make the ball roll over there and won't dig? And you know what I've got? To throw this wedge away. I've got my three wood. Here's my three wood. So I'm gonna put it right back on the edge here. This club won't dig in the heel. So I, even though I'm gonna be far from the ball, it won't dig. And I can go ahead and just put it basically and roll it over there and it will come out just perfect. Look at how good that is. Oh my gosh, it might go in two feet from the hole and it didn't dig and it didn't end up in the bunker. So practice this. Go take a ball, and I know this isn't fun, this will give you nightmares. Put it right on the edge, hang, hang it right on the edge there. Grab your three wood and see if you can just put it over there. Nice and simple, just like that. I bet you'll save a lot of shots when you do this on the course. Well, it's time for Talk Nerdy, and we're not in studio right now because I wanted to demonstrate dynamic balance. Dynamic balance is something our body has to keep us safe. It's self-preservation. It allows me to walk on this curb right here and not just tumble off into traffic. That would be bad if I did that. So dynamic balance is very important in golf and in life. I can just walk along this curb and look at the TV right there, and I'm not falling over. So I can walk up here, dynamic balance. Look, let's get a golf ball and play here. So I got a golf ball, so I can swing and hit this and not fall off balance. Boom, just like that. Perfect, right down the street here. Boy, was that pretty. Now, here's what I see dynamic balance wise. I see a lot of y'all that couldn't hit a ball standing on the curb. If you got on the curb and you swung, you'd fall off the curb into traffic. So very important that you understand balance and how it works. So we're going to go back in the studio in a second and we're going to show you and explain how you get this balance. But once again, if I have bad dynamic balance, I can't stand here on this curb and hit a shot because I'll swing and I'll fall over and I'll tumble back like this. Well, that's no good. So let's go back inside the studio and I'm going to show you how to understand dynamic balance so you can get on the curb and not end up in the street in harm's way. Let's go. Well, we've come indoors for the Talk Nerdy second part here to understand dynamic balance as it relates to golf. Yeah, we did it out there on the curb where I showed you dynamic balance is self-preservation as you walk along the curb so you don't fall off. You don't ever think about that, but you know what? You don't apply it to your golf swing and you fall over the place. You'd be falling over the curb. You'd be falling in traffic. You'd be falling off the cliff. Let me explain dynamic balance in a way that helps us work it in the golf swing. Let me show you a video here on the 60 inch monitor. So what we've got here on the monitor is, this is a construction crane. So it lifts stuff, drops stuff, moves stuff back and forth. But the crane, on this end of the crane, you know what they've got? They've got counterweights. So when this lifts stuff and takes over and drops it, this counterweight over here keeps it from falling over this way when it picks up something heavy. 
So the question is, dynamic balance. Where are our counterweights? Where's the science of how we bend and counterweight ourselves for dynamic balance? So come over here, let's look at this now. Where in my body do I have a counterweight so that when I bend forward, my counterweight keeps me from tumbling over? Well, this thing back here, your rear end, that's your counterweight. Your rear end has to go out so that when this part comes over, you have good dynamic balance. So I've got a, I've got a cute little counterweight. Some people have a little bigger counterweights, but it's your counterweight. It has to go back. So you can take your club simply and put it on your hip bones like this and stuff your counterweight back and keep your back straight. And now this balances this piece, piece that's over. So dynamic balance, if I'm bent over the right amount and I've got my counterweight out, when I swing, I can stay in balance. When I'm up like this and my counterweight is in too much, I'm not in dynamic balance because I can't get down to the ball, so my counterweight will move out and I'll go down. The error I see most of the time is I see players that are bent over too far and it overdoes their counterweight and now you have to move your counterweight in to find dynamic balance. So here's what we want. Club on the hips, push it back. At this point, the back of my shoulders should come and touch the tip of my knees like this. If you can do these two things, guess what? You're gonna have your dynamic balance. You're gonna be in the perfect position to make swings, hold your finish, and not fall off the curb. Okay, you know what? Everybody's full of hot air, especially golf people. They've got all these myths and misconceptions about golf and golf game, and you know what? It's time for It's Just Hot Air, brought to you by our friends at Executive Air, where we talk about these crazy things you hear in golf, and then I prove them wrong. Okay, so here's what we're talking about today. We're talking about what happens after impact and right before it. Remember, you want this thing moving fast. So at impact, if this club's moving 100 miles an hour, it better be fast over here. So you've been told, let's just get to a nice, comfortable finish. And what you end up with is these swings where we get to the ball, we quit, and we coast, and we pose at this nice finish. That's not what you want. We want a hard stop. We want this club to be going fast, and then you have to snatch it to a hard stop. But the question is, what does a hard stop look like? Well, hard stops might look kind of like this. So here's a, whoa, that's a hard stop, whoops. Let's see, oh grandma, oh grandma with a hard stop there. Oh, watch out for those poles. They tend to make you have a hard stop and fences, absolutely boom. And ouch, that was a hard, 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 hard stop. And oh my gosh, this is a slow motion hard stop, but we want that club stopping hard and they, he, oh, that's a definite hard stop. And you gotta like the little splash of dirt there too. So hard stops, flash, those fast moving club stops. Those are examples of hard stops. Let's make this thing stop hard. So when you're coming through, keep it going fast and stop it hard over here. Make your muscles grab the club and stop it. You don't want to come through and slow down and then coast to this nice little slow pose. No, we want this baby moving fast. Keep it going. Bang, quick hard stop. Make your muscles keep you going. Keep your speed and get to a hard stop. And you know what? You'll probably find distance you didn't know you had. Now stay tuned. We've got some more great stuff coming up here in the Golf Kingdom. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more pro pointers from me via your Amazon enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day I give you a new tip free with your Amazon enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host Rob Strano, every day. Someone's in the kitchen with Strano. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. It's the Golf Kingdom kitchen and we're in the kitchen to help your putting stroke, especially if you have a jerky stroke. Maybe you jerk it back or you jerk it in transition or you stab at it coming through and kind of pop at the ball. I've got a great drill here in the kitchen to help you get that under control. And the great thing is you can practice this at home as much as you want. And then hopefully it applies when you get to the golf course because you can apply the same feeling we're gonna do here in the kitchen. So what I want you to get is get, get a cup and you're gonna fill it with some water. So I got this cup. It's filled with water almost to the very top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right between my hands. Just like I got my hands like they're praying, but I got the cup of water between it. 
Doesn't have to be a big one, can be a small one, whatever. But we want to have lots of water in this. What, are, what you'll see is when I start taking my stroke, I'm not spilling any water. See, my stroke is smooth back and through. I can go faster and I'm not still not spilling any water. I picked up my pace, but because I'm equal, I'm not spilling water. Now, what's going to happen is if I jerk it going back, oh, there goes water. If I go back smooth and I jerk it going forward, oh, there goes more water there. And if I come down and I hit at it, oh, that was a lot of water that came out. So if I can stand here and do this smoothly, that should apply to my putting stroke when I grab a putter. So I grab a putter here. I want to feel like I'm not spilling any water. So when you look at the low view here of that putter in my hands and arms, it's just like having the water there. I'm not spilling any of it out of there. So come back up to me. So just look at my stroke, smooth back and through. I can go faster and keep it the same speed or slower and keep it the same speed. Just keep it the same speed. Get the hit and the pop out of there. Practice this in your kitchen, and I bet it translates out there to the golf course to making more putts. And once again, where in the world is Rob? Right now, I am in Tuscany, the wine valley of Italy. I'm at one of the top wineries in the world. We're talking 100-point wines. This place is the Jack Nicholas of wineries. Their bottles are all major champions. I just got done with the wine tasting here, so this could be an interesting segment. I may make absolutely no sense. This might be a lot of fun, but my goal is I'm going to help you with your downswing using wine bottles. So I've got a few wine bottles here, and these bottles are $200 each so it's going to be fun for me to teach you using these great wines my goal here is to teach you the proper way to lag the club or deliver the club in your downswing at impact so a lot of people release early or they lag and hang on for too long i want to teach you how to bring the club down properly using wine bottles so i've got two bottles here once again, $200 a bottle. The great thing about wine bottles is if they're full, they're heavy. So it will give you the feeling when you're done of doing it correctly. So the weight stresses your muscles and makes them learn something new. Right now, if the weather's getting bad and it's getting towards winter and you're stuck inside, grab a couple of wine bottles and we're going to fix your downswing. And at the end, you can drink the wine and have a great evening at home. So here's how it works. You grab the wine bottles by the neck. Hold them straight down, and you're going to take your backswing. So swing back, don't bang the bottles. Now when you get to here at the top of your backswing, the bottles are equal. Take your, your back hand and take this wine bottle and bend it this way. So you kind of make an L with the two wine bottles. Now what you're going to do is you're going to swing down and don't bang the bottles together. Do this slowly to start with. So right here, slowly come down and don't bang the bottles. You'll teach this trail hand how to lag the club and keep this lined up. So go to the top, bend that one back, hold it coming down, and line it up. Now if you're a little nervous about using wine bottles, use a couple liter bottles of soda. Now, if you tend to drag the club for too long, what you want to do is you want to swing down from that position and you want to actually bang the bottles together right there. I wouldn't recommend wine bottles for doing that. Use your soda bottles. But you're going to come down and you're going to try to pop the bottles together at impact. This will help your downswing and it'll teach you to lag the club properly coming down. This, so, great tip using wine bottles. Time to rise. It's always a good way to end the show because I tie in golf and I tie in a little life to help you with your game. And I heard something the other day. I want you to go find Matthew McConaughey, a quote he had recently. Go find the little video of the podcast he was on. He said this. He said, I'd be embarrassed. Embarrassed was the word he used if I didn't work as hard as I did to get to be where I am. I got to thinking about that. Do the work, do the work. I used to play 54 holes a day as a kid and as a tour player. I'd play all day, every day. I'd practice, practice, practice. So I don't look back as my tour player career and go, gosh, I didn't give it my all. Because I did. I was out there no matter how hot it was, how cold it was, if it was raining, 
I did the work. So I don't look back on my career and, and embarrassed by the level of effort I put in. I gave it everything. So golf, business, family, life, give it everything. Do the work, put the work in, give it your full attention. As a tour player, it was 24 seven, eat, sleep, drink the game. So keep in mind that we've got to do the work. You've got to put it in, whether you expect to have good results on the golf course or good results in your business. You got to focus, do the work and get it done. Well, that was a lot of fun giving you things to decode your game, maybe to take it to the golf course or take it to the practice area, some things to work on to help you improve. Now, let's recap what we did in our strand notes right here. Right off the bat, I gave you in the build it segment a tip on using tape to get a strong grip. Then after that, we talked nerdy and I talked about dynamic balance and how important dynamic balance is to be able to swing and not fall over and how to get it. Then we went into the Golf Kingdom kitchen and I gave you a great tip on don't spill the water to have a smooth stroke back and through and take the hit out of your stroke. Now, to get more fun stuff from us here in the Golf Kingdom, be sure to jump out on social media. We're on all the social media platforms. You can find us everywhere. If you wanna see all the past episodes of the Golf Kingdom, maybe you've missed one, shame on you for missing one, but maybe you've missed one, you can find us on our own Roku channel. So go to Roku, download the Golf Kingdom channel, and you see all our episodes there. Also, if you have an Alexa device, you can enable the Golf Kingdom skill. Yes, you can ask Alexa to give you a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day, and you get an audio tip right there from her to help your game. And last thing and most important thing is download the Golf Kingdom app. Yes, go to your app store, download the Golf Kingdom app, and all the shows are there, all the clips, all the tips, and something daily from me every day to help you with your game. Thanks again for joining me here in the Golf Kingdom. <laughs>